1942, I met a very scared young man in here. His name was Guy Paul Mora. He'd been convicted of the rape and murder of a little girl. He insisted he was innocent. The child that he was accused of killing was nine years old. Her name was Christine Jessup. The Jessup family, right from the outset, believed that uh, Christine had been taken from home, which caused the focus of the early investigation to be on people who lived nearby, neighbors, like the family of Al and Ida Moran, uh, and in particular their, old, their son, Guy Paul. One phrase that would characterize the rest of the in investigation and it would continue to point this finger of guilt uh, at Guy Paul More. They handcuffed him and drove him to a Durham police station in Whitby. They were determined to prove guilt no matter what the evidence. By the time they brought him in, his fate was sealed. At 20 minutes after 4 this afternoon, 26-year-old Guy Paul Moran became a free man. Well, I'm very, very happy for the verdict that has come out from the jury. The system does prove to be quite effective. It has proven me as I am innocent. Guilty of first-degree murder. Guy Paul Moran sat quietly in the courtroom. He didn't move a muscle as the verdict was read. Christine Jessup's parents, Bob Jessup and his estranged wife, Janet Jessup, both say they're relieved that justice has finally be been done.
The media played a big role in perpetuating the stereotype of Guy Paul Moran as weirdo, pervert, and ultimately killer. Then I was uh, brought into a small, a small room. Um, and there was a... Uh, um, that, that's the room I stayed in for uh, all of six and a half hours. In the room, there was a large blow-up of his fingerprint. The police told him it came from Christine's clothes. They are your fingerprints. They are on her clothing. And that's your fingerprint up there. And I say, it's impossible. I have never touched that child. There's no way I thought for one second that I'm going to be staying in that jail for long. There's no way they can keep an innocent person behind bars. But look what happened, eh? Yeah. They actually did. And, uh, well. pieces of evidence they used was a blow-up of that fingerprint that he would have been led to believe came from some aspect of the crime scene, whereas in fact they had taken it from his clarinet. When you again look at the evidence that was there when he got charged, you got to think that they must have thought he would crack. We're going to get a confession from him. Uh, there were other factors, hair and fiber, that uh, it would turn out over time to have very little credibility. Not only was key evidence in the case misinterpreted, a lot of it was deliberately manipulated. Some of it was even falsified. Important evidence that might have been helpful to Guy Paul Moran's defense just disappeared. Investigators at one stage became so desperate that they actually recruited a couple of jailhouse snitches. The guy in the, in the cell with Guy Paul was a pathological liar. As it turned out in his first trial, the jury didn't believe a word that came out of the mouths of those two jailhouse informants, and they, they really didn't take seriously the evidence of hair and fiber and various other things that the Crown brought against him. And at the end of that trial, he walked out of the courthouse a free man. Ironically, a key moment in that second trial would be the testimony by those two jailhouse snitches 
who in the first trial had no credibility whatsoever, had been discounted by the jury. In the second trial, because of the way they were presented by the Crown as, as honest citizens voluntarily coming forth to testify with nothing to gain and everything to lose, they had an enormous impact on the second jury, as we found out when we tracked down and talked to some of those jurors. I looked at my jury, not one of them faced me, one had tears in her eyes. I looked at my uh, defense, wow. I did hear properly. We find the accused, Guy Palmore, guilty of first degree murder. Yeah, I remember those words. I remember his despair, but he couldn't have known in that dark moment that public opinion had already begun to shift. A book by the justice reporter Kirk Macon and our documentary would later contribute to widespread public doubt about his conviction. And when he appealed that conviction, it became clear just how widespread were the doubts about his guilt. At one time, the system was opposed to you, but ultimately the system worked. The system did not work. But it's the people who w were able to work the system mm -hmm. to make the system do what it's supposed to do. But the system is not supposed to work. People are supposed to work the system. And because of all the people who came together, a very influential board, uh, in fact, a very influential group of people came together and were working uh, in concert with Guy Paul to, to free him. We